this as a sign to your situation and to your enemy. Amen. Satan, the devil, I wish you would just throw your hands up as a sign of liberty to say I'm free. Say Satan had me bound, but Jesus lifted me. Satan had me bound and depressed and despondent. But the joy of the Lord, it is my strength. The joy of the Lord, it is my strength. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, God, we bless it this morning, sir, and we thank the Lord for you tuning in and joining us. Amen. On this live stream, E-Church Virtual Sanctuary Cyber Worship, whatever you want to call it. Amen. But we're here for no other reason but to magnify and to glorify the greatest name that this world has ever known. Amen. For the Bible declares that at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow. And every tongue shall confess that he is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And we bless his name today. We magnify his name. Amen. And we lift him up today. We thank you for joining us. We thank, amen, the worshipers for being in the house this morning. We give God praise to them. And certainly we thank the Lord for the minstrels that are here this morning. And all of you in your respective places. Before we go into the word of the Lord, I would like to encourage you and invite you, amen, if you would like to come in and to sow a seed into this ministry, into this portion of the vineyard, may you're able to go to our website at EmmanuelNashville.com and you're able to sow your seed there. And if you don't want to do that, then you're able also to mail into P.O. Box 1196 Hendersonville, Tennessee 37077. But we thank you for the liberality of your giving and we trust that as you have given unto the Lord that God will be faithful. Amen. And give it back to you. Amen. I, love, I don't know about you, but I love to worship the Lord. And you know my responsibility is to preach the word this morning, but I tell you, I just feel a spirit of worship, a spirit of gratitude. Amen. And I feel something down in my shadow that said, our God is a great God. And because God is the greatest power, we shall never be defeated. And that's the reason why we're praising the Lord like we are while some are still quarantined in their homes. And amen. Overcome with a feeling of uncertainty. Amen. We are sure that our God is a great champion and a savior. Amen. And our trust and our confidence is in him this morning. I'm going to get into the word of the Lord. Amen. Before I lose my voice in worship. Amen. But I love to worship the Lord. I would like to draw our attention this morning to a very familiar passage of scripture. As we turn to Psalms chapter the 121st division of Psalms. I'd like to read verses 1 through 8, which is the 121st division of Psalm in its entirety. Psalms 121, verses 1 through 8, and it declares, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills, from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth me will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. My God, that's encouraging to somebody right there. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Thus be the reading of the word of the Lord. And I just want to come to you this morning a very simple subject. As a matter of fact, this message is one word which should be easy to remember as you go through your week. And I simply want you to make the declaration and put it in the atmosphere right now. One word. Kept. Kept. Amen. Kept. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. The, to be honest, brothers and sisters, as I begin to consider and to ponder this scripture and begin to look at my own life, I must be honest 
and confess that the greatest of fears in my life and perhaps in most of your lives do not come because of what we see but rather they come because of what we cannot see. The reality is, is that whether it is the next unpredicted natural disaster or whether it is, man, the next disease potentially that may strike our bodies or the bodies of those which we love, the reality is, amen, that most of the anxiety that we're facing and dealing with right now is not based off of what we have already experienced, but rather it is because of our imagination. I can hear some even now begin to say and make questions and say, Pastor, what it is that we are seeing in our world today is reality and it is not based out of my imagination. And I would agree with you that there, amen, it is unquestionable that we are seeing, amen, a great amount of death and diseases we have never seen before. But I challenge us to understand and to look beyond what we see with the natural eye and cause ourselves to remember that God is yet on the throne and God is up to something great. You have to have placed your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ to be able to come to that place of resolve and to be that resolute in your spirit to understand that God is yet working even when it seems like he's not working. The reality, brothers and sisters, is that Satan tries to consume us with fear by magnifying and enlarging the unknown. Amen. As the thief and the robber that Satan is, many a times the devil's desire, amen, is to rob us of our peace and to exploit our imagination and to torment us with feelings of insecurity. Amen. But we must understand that we are able to be secure because we have placed our faith and our trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Man, no doubt the children of Israel knew something about this feeling of insecurity because the Bible declares to us and tells us in the book of Exodus chapter number 23 uh, verses 14 through 16 that it was the Lord that began speak to the children of Israel and he declared to them that they were each year to travel from their homes amen far away to the city of Jerusalem and they were to make amen three feasts unto the Lord and the Bible declares there in Exodus chapter number 23 verse 14 he says three times thou shalt keep a feast unto me in the year thou shalt keep the feast of unleavened bread thou shalt eat unleavened bread seven days as I commanded thee and the time appointed of the month of a bid for in it thou camest out of Egypt and none shall appear before empty. He says, and the feast of harvest, the first fruits of thy labor, which thou hast sown in the field, and the feast of the ingathering, which is the end of the year, when thou hast gathered, amen, in thy labor out of thy field. In other words, God tells Israel that three times a year, I want you to take this journey, take this pilgrimage, and I want you to come up to the house of the Lord in Jerusalem. And when you get journey 
by which as they pursue in obedience to obey the commandment of the Lord, that this journey began to come with a sense of anxiety and created a feeling of needing to be kept. I need to pause for a moment and ask somebody out there, do you realize, amen, that you need to be kept? Amen. Why is it you may ask? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Why is it you may ask that I declare that we need to be kept? Well, I can hear David in the psalm as he began to declare that except the Lord build the house, they that labor, they labor in vain. And then he continues to say, except the Lord keep the city, the watchman that is watching, his way is in vain. In other words, the word But I can hear the songwriter from the old church when they began to declare that everything that is moving is moving by the power of God. Uh, yes, now the Bible declares that they were to keep this feast in obedience. They would take this dangerous trek, amen, from their, from their homes to go up to Jerusalem. Why do I consider it? And then continue to see that they had to go up. Well, the Bible declares to us that Jerusalem was situated upon a hill. You may not believe me, but if you will remember, amen, in the Gospel of Luke chapter number 10, verse number 30, it is there that Jesus answers the question and gives a parable to the multitude. The Bible declares there that Jesus says that there was a certain man. This man Jerusalem, and he went to Jericho and fell among thieves. Thank you, Lord. The Bible, the Bible declares that when he fell among thieves, these thieves stripped him of his clothes. They wounded him and departed from him. And the Bible declares, leaving him had dead. In other words, and in the parable that Jesus gives to the multitude, amen. suggest to us that the house of God was built upon a hill. Amen. And there were valleys, amen, that surrounded the mountain. This was the journey that the children of Israel were to take three times a year. Because God had told them that three times a year you are to come up to the house of the Lord and to keep this feast unto me. Well, well, this is not very different, brother sisters. Amen. From the days in which we are living now. I can hear one writer as he began to declare that if we are not regularly filling, regularly filling our need to be kept, then perhaps we have lost the whole own reality. In other words, we must understand that in times like these, yes Lord, I hear you now. In times like Savior. In times like these, brothers and sisters, we need an anchor. And the songwriter said, be very sure that your anchor holds and grips that solid rock. I wish somebody would just shout out the name of the rock. Thank you, Lord. They had to take this treacherous journey, y'all. And it sounds like the time in which we're living now. Yes, brothers and sisters, we are carrying the promises of God upon our lives. But yet and still we find ourselves from time to time in which we feel desperate and uncertain. We find ourselves from time to time being tempted. Temptation hiding and striking at times in which we are not already calculated in our lives. We find as we take this journey from earth to glory, we find trials ambushing us and our loved ones sins lingering and besetting us. Disasters and crises, Lord have mercy coming upon us that seem to be unannounced and uncommon. Somebody need to shout right now. I need 
statistic. If God doesn't keep me, I'll be the next casualty. But I can hear David when he began to declare in the word. He said, I laid me down and I slept. For the Lord, he sustained me. I wonder, is there anybody out there? I'm getting ready to move y'all. But I wonder, is there anybody out there that says, I realize the benefit package that I have because my confidence is in my God. Thank you, Lord. You need to give him a praise right there. Thank you, Lord. Well, brothers and sisters, we see in this text and in the text in the book of Luke chapter number 10, there is a great sense that we all need to be kept. Even in the world in which we're living right now, we understand that Satan as the robber is on the prowl right now. I can hear Peter when he began to declare, my God, that Satan is going about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. The thief is on the prowl. Enticements of sin and temptation are everywhere. And it seems like death is lurking around every corner. children of God because as they would take this journey up the road to Jerusalem they would not cover their mouths in fear of the uncertain circumstances that they might encounter on their journey but the Bible the Bible declares that rather than covering their mouths they would raise their voices in an anthem of praise and they would sing this praise Thank you, Lord, of the faithfulness of their God. They would cry out with hopes, hopes of certainty, understanding that the same God that had brought them thus far is the same God that would take them in. And I came to tell somebody this morning, I'm almost there. I came to tell somebody this morning that God will keep you. I remember what the old church used to say. I feel like preaching this morning. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I remember what the old church used to say. They said, God will keep you if you want to be kept. And I know that to be the truth this morning. But I would like to add my testimony to their proclamation. That even when you don't want to be kept, when you say from your own coach in the corner and say coach through in the tie. But God being the great coach that he is, he ignores what you say and continues to coach your life because he says I know the end from the beginning. That if you will just stay in the fight, you're going to come out victorious. I ain't got no help out there this morning, but I wish you would text your name and tell your we are victorious. As a matter of fact, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Thank you, Lord. I got to move on, y'all. Thank you, Lord. I got to move on now. They would take this journey and rather than make exclamations and proclamations of fear, they would raise their voice in an anthem of praise. They would begin to sing this song about the faithfulness and the mercy of our God. I don't know exactly what they would sing, Joan, but I know in our day, maybe they sing something like this. They might say, ain't no need to worry what the night is going to bring. Because it'll be all over in the morning. I don't know what it was that they would sing, but as they were on this room of uncertainty, they would encourage themselves in the Lord. I need to pause and tell somebody out there, right where you are in the middle of your situation, right where you are with your laid off self, right where you are with your bank account with insufficient funds, I need to tell you that I heard it on yesterday afternoon when somebody declared, as David once said in the word, I've been young. 
forsaken no his seed begging bread I need to tell somebody out there this morning that if God needs to send a raven like he did the prophet Elijah to send a raven to feed you he will take care of his own I wish I had some help out there that would stand up and testify that he Realize I'm looking to God because God is what. 
watching my heel. As a matter of fact, God, he's governing my heel. He's governing every valley that I come to in my life. It is God that's keeping it. And not only is God keeping it, but he'll keep me in the daytime and in the nighttime. He doesn't slumber and he doesn't sleep. God's not sleeping on the slightest of your concern. My Lord, I hear the word. The word of the Lord declare. Thank you, Lord. I hear the word. The word of the Lord declare that his eye is on the sparrow. And if his eye is on the sparrow, I know that he's watching me. He's numbered the hands that are on my head. Surely he's concerned about your sustenance. Surely he's concerned about your health. Surely he's concerned about your children and about your preservation. But we serve a God that does not sleep. We serve a God that does not slumber. I got to get ready to get out of here. Y'all looking like you in the dentist's office. I can't see you, but I feel you. But I came to tell somebody this morning that I've been kept and I'm being kept by his power divine. I'm being kept and I like what the writer said. Thank you, Lord. I like what the writer said. He said, the Lord, he is my keeper. He said, the Lord, he is the shade upon my right hand. The shall not smite thee by day. Shift 
verse number 7. Uh, he said, for the Lord is good. Uh, 